Hi there, it's Dr. Davis again, and today I'd like to talk to you about the relationship of IBS and your thyroid. In the past, and unfortunately some doctors still feel this way, IBS was considered a diagnosis of exclusion, where the doctor would finally label your symptoms as IBS when they couldn't think of anything else to call it. As you can imagine, this didn't lead to much in the way of effective treatment. But IBS research has advanced so much in the past five years that it's cleared the path to a much fuller understanding of the cause and effects of IBS. One of the most important relationships, it turns out, is with low thyroid function. Thyroid function is surprisingly complex with hormones changing into other hormones, organs affecting other organs, brain thyroid crosstalk, and the gut affecting pretty much everything. So I've outlined seven ways that the thyroid and gut interrelate. The first gut-thyroid connection is related to leaky gut. One can say that the gut is the primary immune organ. That's because 70 to 80 percent of the immune system is housed there as the gut-associated lymphoid tissue or GALT, comprised of different types of tissues that store the immune cells like T and B lymphocytes. These cells are responsible for the attacks on foreign invaders or antigens that come in with our food. This is a great system for protection, but things can go badly when poor gut health leads to a leaky gut, where large proteins are allowed to pass through the intestinal wall and are attacked by our immune cells, leading to an increase in autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's thyroid. To counter this, the thyroid hormones T3 and T4 help decrease the leakiness of the gut by influencing the tight junctions between those cells in the small intestine and stomach. The second gut thyroid connection is related to low stomach acid. You may know that low stomach acid or hypochlorhydria is a common trigger to eventual IBS, but a common cause of that low stomach acid is from decreased thyroid function. The acid in the stomach is required to eliminate bacteria and to fully digest your food, especially protein. The result of low acid can be bacterial overgrowth of the small intestine or SIBO, which is the cause of most of the IBS symptoms like bloating, gas, and pain. And just like low thyroid issues can lead to low stomach acid, low stomach acid can contribute to hypothyroidism. This vicious cycle happens when indigestion in the stomach decreases absorption of important nutrients like vitamin B12, folate, vitamin D, iron, beta carotene, and trace elements that along with poor diet sets the stage for autoimmune type thyroid problems. The third gut thyroid connection is related to T3 to T4 hormone conversion. When the thyroid produces its hormone T4, it must be converted into the active hormone T3 in order to affect the cells of the body. Some of this conversion is done in the liver, but a full 20% is converted in the GI tract from T3 sulfate and T3 acetic acid by the enzyme called intestinal sulfatase. This enzyme is produced by healthy gut bacteria. So with a shift of a balance of good to bad bacteria called dysbiosis, or overgrowth of all the bacteria, this conversion can't fully take place, leaving you with hypothyroid symptoms even though all your lab tests are normal. The fourth gut thyroid connection is related to the gallbladder. Among other things, the liver functions to digest fats assist in mineral absorption and detoxify certain hormones that have built up during the day. With low thyroid, the gallbladder that receives the bile from the liver is weakened, slowing emptying and creating a kind of bile gallstone sludge. This results in poor detoxification that decreases T4 to T3 conversion, but also allows the increase of estrogen. This excess in estrogen leads to high levels of binding proteins that prevent thyroid hormones from entering the cells. The fifth gut thyroid connection is related to constipation. Although IBS comes in a diarrhea variety, the constipation type IBS is more common with low thyroid. The thyroid slows the GI tract causing constipation. That will lead to decreased hormone clearance, especially estrogen, and then lower thyroid hormones which then results in a slower GI tract. The sixth gut thyroid connection is related to lipopolysaccharides. The cell walls of certain bacteria contain lipopolysaccharides and are toxic. They're part of the infection process stimulating proteins and result in free radicals that cause further damage. This is why we take antioxidants and eat blueberries to decrease this potential damage. 
Conversely, the increase in bacteria lipopolysaccharides reduces thyroid hormone levels, decreases the pituitary instructions to the thyroid, and increases autoimmune thyroid conditions. The seventh and last thyroid connection is related to cortisol. The gut inflammation that we talked about earlier raises the level of the stress hormone cortisol from the adrenal glands. The effect of this is to inactivate some of the T3, resulting in a lower level of the active T3 hormone. That's right, stress makes you fatigued and overwhelmed. So what can we learn from all this? Well, we know that the thyroid influences the gut and vice versa. So if we want to solve all of our problems with IBS, we may have to test both the thyroid and the gut with some of the new sophisticated lab tools we have at our disposal. Then you should seek out a doctor that has experience with both gut and thyroid conditions to really see what the problem is and decide what action to take. If you're interested in additional information about natural ways to solve your IBS problem, please visit our site and subscribe to make sure you're getting all our updates and new videos as they come online. And if you'd like to work with me personally, you can let me know there too, so we can get that set up as soon as possible. Health is on the way. Music